Howdy folks, Kirk and Jason here with another tip of the day guys. I'm going to show you how to pass your lath inspection. Lath, L-A-T-H. What are we doing here? Okay, I looked at this yesterday. The owner was here and as soon as I pulled up, I, I happened to notice a new um, electrical panel here. So he was showing me this and he says, well, what do you think? I said, well, I could see you had an electrical panel here and he says how do you know that I said of course I cheated man when I walked up I seen the new electrical panel and I knew the house is a hundred years old by looking at it or the apartment so you used to have a meter here it leaked so you had to replace this and he says well how do you know it didn't come from the top and I said well I looked already and I seen a parapet up there you can see a parapet Parapets are notorious for leaking after 80 years. The first 50, they're okay, but then the caps kind of melt with the hot sun. So he's got a flashing cap on there now. I said, I know that's been compromised, but if it leaked at the top, it would funnel down. Water funnels down, so all of this would be bad. All of that would be bad up to, say, that window. So I knew that. Anyway, so he replaced he moved the, the electrical or had PG&E come and redo this. What I'm going to show you guys is, he asked me, well, how are you going to get a weep screed down here, a stucco screed? I said, we're not. <laughs> we're not going to try to get a stucco screed down here because right here is a half inch. And if I put a weep screed, it's going to look ridiculous. The whole building doesn't have a weep screed. A weep or a drip screed for stucco serves three things. It gives us something to stop at. It provides movement for the stucco and it drains for maintenance free color coat finishes. This is not a maintenance free color coat finish, it's a painted finish. So, what we're going to do, this is how you guys could pass your lath inspection. You don't need a weep screed here because back when I was first in the trade, there were no weep screeds. <laughs> there were no shear wall. This plywood serves as a shear wall. So this plywood right here, we didn't have plywood back in the days when I started lathing. And yeah, that's like over 40 years ago. Say so in 1975, they said, okay, you need to put a drip screed. But again, they weren't using those when I was plastering. So all the houses you see, if you see stucco going down to the foundation, that means it was built before 1975 or 1980. And if you see plywood, that wasn't code until 1980. 80, I think, you know, you can Google that stuff, but what we're going to do is we're going to take our new paper, put our new paper here, and when you get concrete like this, guys, here's what you do. The idea is to cover this paper with, or cover this wood with paper, so we're going to come bring our paper right to here, and then we're going to staple the wire on here, and this stucco or this concrete is going to show. So what we, what we did is we took a wire brush and we cleaned this out. And this blue stuff here, that's just, just a bonding agent. You'll see it when we get to that stage, why the bonding agent is necessary for the sucker to adhere. Now, we're going to cover all, we're going to protect the mud seal, M-U-D, mud seal. So we're going to protect the mud seal, take the paper up. And when, when we get to this area here, I was doing this and the owner said, why are you doing that? And I said, well... We're not, I can see, I just want to, I don't want to try to move the stucco, but I want to raise it up like an eighth of an inch. That's all, because we, we don't want to beat that up. And the reason for that is, we're, we're, the paper's kind of deteriorated, but I expected that. What we're going to do is say, for example, now, see this paper here. You probably won't be able to see it, but what we do is we slide pieces, of, after I get my, paper here we're gonna cut we got to go underneath this paper and how far does this go under you can see it goes way under there but what it's gonna do is it's gonna hit a nail a staple or back then they they nailed this off they didn't even have staple guns so they nailed it off and so we will be taking our new paper and shoving it under this existing paper and when we hit a nail we come we just deal with it but you see that's all under the existing paper you can't waterproof this unless you find good paper. And do we always find good paper? Absolutely not. Sometimes there's no paper. Sometimes there's no wire. Sometimes there's no wood. In fact, 
Jay's standing on a garage. This is a big garage. <laughs> About eight years ago, I was pushing out a garage. Jay said, Dad, what you doing? I said, well, I'm trying to see if the, I see this because it was open. I said, we see there's no paper, wire, or wood left. The only thing holding this garage up is the stucco. So I was curious if it would wobble it. It didn't budge an inch. Anyway, I'm going to get busy, guys. I'll show you some other little things once we get there. Uh, what you can't see because we're on the roof is I'm going to take the paper all the way here. And where we got this hole here, we shove paper the exact same way I did under here in here and then we start with caulking and there's you guys usually see me using two caulkings if one is this nasty stuff here sycaflex it's the best caulking because it's an adhesive sealant now this stuff is for cracks and you see me using this a lot too so we're going to go ahead and get started paper this up and when we get to the area say like uh, where these steel straps are when I got the paper on I take a chalk and I mark it. Why? Because when I use this gun here, if I don't know this strap is here or that strap, I'll hit it and that staple will bounce off and hit me in the face. And yeah, I almost lost an eye once. I'm wearing glasses, not because I'm going to staple, because it's windy right now. And all this stucco would go in your eyeballs if you're not wearing glasses. Do I wear safety glasses? I should, but I don't. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and uh, paper this, and when we get to this stage, I'll show you what's really important. So I'll show you the stage we're at. Here's what you can do if you want to pass a lath inspection by the city. Either mark the wall, mark the paper, mark the bottoms, but you've got to get a staple or a nail into the studs. So here's the studs. And I'll just show you this real quick, because eventually what I did is, I went ahead and I fished my paper in. But what happens if you hit a nail? And the, the owner was here. He says, well, what about the nails? And I said, that's a good question. I think I'll show that. So now this is under the paper. Now it's overlapping here. And that's being held by the wall itself. But just in case. All right, here's a nail. So what we do is we're, on, we're under the paper where that nail is. You go this way. And then you take it on this side and you go that way. And now you're as far into the paper as you possibly can get. You can't get any further under the paper. And that's because I lifted it too. And so we, we make a V where that nail is. The nail's about right here. So we're good now. And what I do, guys, is if you've got steel straps, the Simpson ties, often the city will say, hey, man, put some Simpson ties here and there. I take my chalk and I mark this. You take your chalk and you mark this. You could actually you put it sideways, pull the paper off, and you can see this. Why? Because in a minute, I'm going to push this down. And then I'm going to staple the new wire into this existing wire. And I'll tell you, if you hit a strong tie, the staples could hit this and bounce off. Again, I said I almost lost an eye one time. I was stapling and I was stapling fast, just pow, 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 pow. And normally I'll go through eight to 10,000 staples a day if I'm doing whole houses. That's a lot of staples. I hit a Simpson strong tie and that staple, like three times, but one time it, it, it hit so hard and it stuck my face and then fell. And I thought, wow, that kind of hurt. And I just kept going, kept going, because didn't lose a beat. But later on, I had a hole right here. And I thought, dang. And I wasn't even wearing glasses. So when I use a gun, I'm always wearing glasses. Uh, well, not really. <laughs> but you guys should. If you Don't do what I do. Do what I'm saying. Always wear the glasses. I'm wearing the glasses because of a lot of crap blowing around. Anyway, what happens if this wall leaks? Well, they call me back. Hey, Kirk, you know that patch you did is leaking. So we got to make sure it's, it's uh, watertight. That's the most important. What happens if it's ugly as sin? Nothing. It's just an ugly patch job. But we're going to match this on the money, I told them. Now, why do we tie new wire to existing wire? Because if I don't tie the new wire to this wire, a perimeter crack will appear. How long? In one month, the perimeter crack will appear or in two weeks and if, if I if there was no wire here and I just put my new wire here it would be a crack so large you could take four credit cards and stick them in there 
And what happens is the water goes in there, eventually after five to 10 seasons, it can deteriorate the paper and when water hits wood, it expands, it explodes it, so we don't want that either. Anyway, we're gonna put this back together. Now this paper here was, was essential. I had to get way deep in there. I'm gonna take some of this, uh, this polyurethane now and put a couple tubes here and on the other side. When we get to the wire, that's the last part. I'll show you guys how to do that and why it's important too. The last thing I'll explain since we're on this uh, topic is uh, staples or nails every six inches. Every six inches on the stud to account for the square inch per uh, ratio. Anyway, uh, when you do this, some guys, they staple so flat that we, if, we don't have the luxury of when we do the cement work of having it mushroom in back of it or be self-furred. So don't get your wire super flat. The idea is the suckle's got to go behind this. And, and again, I say that in this video, in the description, I'll, I'll put a link of a job we did. A guy laughed it and he just, <laughs> let's face it, no pretty way to say it. He did a horrible job because it was, the wire was so flat. We took like hours, me, Lou, and Jay pulling it all out like this because it had no fur. So every six inches. And another thing too, well, last thing, guys. I just put some earplugs in. I just found some toilet paper, rolled it up, and stuck it in my ear because the truck I've got is the new truck. It's not my old one where I had twice as much space. My ears ring because for 40 years I've been using a staple gun. And listen, that gets loud. So wear something in your ears if you're going to use a staple gun. And last thing I'll show you is because I got a different truck than my monster truck, we forgot corners. My other truck used to hold five times as much uh, thing. So Jay bent this right here. And I just use this guy's guardrail. He's got a door he's going to put in for a template. That means this got to line up. That means this got to line up. That means the bottom's got to line up. And back when they did this job 100 years ago, they didn't even have corner aid. That wasn't even invented until about 60 years ago. So this is our guide to make a corner. Anyway, the next time you see us, uh, we'll probably be uh, doing the stucco work on this. Uh, I'm sure it'll, it'll pass inspection. We've had, in the last 40 years, two jobs fail. Why? Because the wire was put on vertically. You can't do that, guys. It's got to go horizontally if you want it to pass. And we had a job like 30 years ago. We had the nails in it, and we bent them downward. Uh, you can't do that either. If you're going to put a nail in it and to hold like the concrete down here, we were trying to hold, it's actually, I'll, I'll point this out. We were trying to hold the wire to the concrete. So we put a big 16 penny nail in and bent it down so that when we plaster it, the wire wasn't passed. You guys would just use something like what I did. Uh, a magnet like this for a half inch nail or a half inch concrete nail to hold that in there and put some of the bottom, fasten it down. Anyway, guys, uh, I think that's about all the stuff you need to know about lathing. But in the link also, I'll put the fastest lathing technique for a wall. How do I know? Because we created it for that reason. This, we got a lot of obstacles in the way, so it may not be the best to show you how, but we got a big wall. It's less than two minutes. It'll show you everything you need to know. Anyway, my name is Kirk. Jason on the camera. We thank you guys for watching. And as usual, we'll see you guys on the next one. All right, folks. As always, thank you for watching another Giordano Stucco video. If you like what we do, please like and subscribe so we can keep making them. And as always, we'll, we'll see, see you on, on the, the next, next one. one.